All right, how's it going, everybody? Uh, it's Marshall, back here in another video. As you guys see, I'm wearing something kind of nice, which is pretty unusual for me. I usually kind of just wear whatever makes me comfortable. Um, I just got back from a job interview at a resort place um, up here um, in the area where my family lives at. Um, so wish me luck on that. I'm pretty sure I got the job, because when I was talking to them, they said they would call me and let me know when I can start. So um, they were saying some good things, and you know, I think it all went well. So wish me luck with that. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be talking more about NMSU basketball and all the new players you've signed, um, how the offseason has been kind of looking so far. I know I did the recent video, which I actually just uploaded right now, about the UNM rivalry only being you know once a, once a year now instead of two, uh, like most fans are accustomed to or used to. Um, so kind of kind of just talk about the new players you've signed, guys who um, are staying. Um, I'll probably make another video soon about players that have left and where they're going, make a separate video on that, or maybe I'll even touch on this video a little bit, we'll see. Um, but first things first, let's take a look at the guys that are staying. So shout out to those guys that are all staying because um, in college basketball nowadays, a lot of people enter the portal and leave. And it's, you know, it can be frustrating for a lot of fans. It's not just in MSU, it's a, it's a lot of schools. We had about five guys in the end of the portal and then three guys that graduated. Um, Casey Ziagu, Jonathan Kenyanga, and um, Jordan Ross, who are all great players for us. I think those three guys probably would have stayed if they had another year of eligibility. Um, so let's talk about the guys that did stay. Uh, Christian Cook. Um, he's staying. Uh, he was a great player for us. He led the team in scoring. He averaged just over 11 points a game and shot the ball really well and just improved overall throughout the season. He started most games. Um, what surprised me most about him was his defense. And I remember when I did an interview with Coach Hoon at the beginning of the season, I wasn't really expecting Christian Cook to be a big-time player for us. And Coach Hoon was saying that he was surprised by how well he was you know, adapting to the program. And he just turned into a great leader for us, so I'm glad he's staying. Um, he's going to be one of our better players again. I'm not saying he's going to be our best player, but he's going to be probably our leader, I would say, when one of our better, uh, better guys returning. And I believe this will be his last year of eligibility. Uh, he might have another year left. I'm not too sure on that. I'd have asked him, but I don't think he does. I think this will be his last year. But it's great to be keeping him. Jaden Harris is another guy that will be staying, who um, was a great player for us this season. He started in a lot of games. Um, he started the season off strong, had a lot of great scoring games. I think he had 24 points against Western New Mexico. A D2 opponent, but you know, nonetheless, he had you know a great first season as a Division One basketball player. He played junior college um, in Texas, so at South Plains College near Lubbock, near Texas Tech. Um, he averaged about seven points a game. Did a lot of great things for us um, when he was starting and when he was coming off the bench. There were stretches where he wasn't scoring the ball as much. He had a couple of donuts where he didn't score any points, but there were also a lot of games towards the end of the season when he started upping his scoring a lot. Um, so overall, it was just a great year for him. And he, um, at one point, like at the beginning of the season, like within the first 10, 15 games, he led the team in minutes played. So Coach Hooten relied on him a lot and trusted him a lot. And I can't wait to see how he continues to adapt and improve. He's another guy I'm not too sure on how many more years of eligibility he has. I know he has at least one, maybe two. You know, Kobe's really screwed everything up, so I don't even know the years of eligibility. I would need to look more into that and even ask those guys personally when I see them, uh, which one will be for a while. Um, Unless they're watching the video, they could always, you know, comment and let know. Let us know. That'd be great. Another guy that's staying is Robert Carpenter. This is the guy that I'm really excited that's that's staying with us. Um, or at least assuming he's staying because I've been seeing him work out and stuff. And I know, I think he graduated too, but he still has like more years of eligibility. Because um, again, with COVID and there's been certain things that, you know, he hasn't always finished season because of being injured and all that. Um, one thing that, you know, a lot of Aggie fans, I mean, Aggie fans know him for how great of a player he was, but the average fan or hater might just know him because of that one punch he threw at the Liberty game, which I was actually at that game live, which is crazy to see. Unfortunate circumstance, which is something he should not have done. Um, but that doesn't, you know, define him as a person. I think he's a lot better of a person than that. I've talked to him a couple times, um, you know, on campus at Taos, even I've seen him. He's a really cool and chill dude. I've seen him with Coco a couple times chilling with him. Really soft-spoken dude, and I, uh, he's always on his little scooter, too. He's going, like, fast as hell. But um, he's a really cool dude, really nice guy. Take it from someone that actually knows him somewhat personally. I'm not, like, best buzz with him or anything like that, but I still know him. So, you know, uh, I think I have good insight on that. And he was a great player for us. He was arguably our best player before, you know, he got suspended for the season or when he couldn't play because of the punch. Um, and then Cook took that throne from him. I mean, Femi was really good, too, um, skilled-wise and all that, but couldn't shoot a damn free throw to save his life. Um... I'll talk more about that in the next video about the guys who are left and all that, but shout out to Femi. He's doing good things. He's actually in Minnesota now. Um, getting sidetracked. That's for a later day. But, um, yeah, I think Robert's going to be a great, uh, I wouldn't say great addition because we've already had him, but he'll be great to have back because he, he was so clutch. I w um, was talking to one of my good friends, Jacob. His uh, uncle was talking to us, and I agreed wholeheartedly with him about how if we would have had Carpenter for the rest of the season, we could have won a couple more games and probably would have been because we were 7-9 in conference, 6 in conference USA. Um, but we were only one or two games away from being top three in the conference. And I think if we had Carpenter for the rest of the, cause we only had him for about the first half of Conference USA. So if we had him for the other half. I think we would have about nine to 10 wins and, uh, have a higher seed in Conference USA and have a better chance to 
make some noise in the tur uh, Conference USA tournament and have a chance at the NCAA tournament. Because uh, again, all you gotta do is win that tournament and you're in, you know. Uh, UTEP almost made it one of our rivals, which I was upset about. I remember that Western Kentucky game. I was I was like a Western Kentucky fan for, for a couple hours, you know, just because I didn't want to see our rival get in because UNM was already in it. But NMSU has many appearances. Many more than them, so that's something we all gonna be happy about, and cannot forget that. You know, don't let these two years of darkness, Aggie fans, take away from the point about all the good things we've had. Um, another um, player that's staying is uh, we have big guy Chris. I can't pronounce his last name. I'll put the name on the screen. I just cannot pronounce his last name. Uh, I don't, I've never really talked to him, but I've seen him in person a lot of times. I think he's noticed me. Um, from what I know, he's staying. I remember I was eavesdropping. I was at a softball game with with Jacob. And uh, we were sitting next to him, and he was talking to some old folks and some big fan, big Aggie fans, and he was talking to them about um, how he's going to be staying here. Um, and so, assuming he's not lying, he has to go through rehab because he got hurt last year. He only played one game for us. And I remember nobody knew who he was because it was against California Baptist. He just checked in, and no one knew who he was. I was like, who the heck is this guy? Um, Tanash Petway was another guy we signed midway through the season. He's no longer with us. But we signed him, and um, that sounded so bad. I gotta go back. I said no longer with us. It sounded like he died. He did not die. All right, he's still alive. He's just playing college basketball somewhere else. So shout out to him. Um, he uh, he joined midway through the season and played like the next day. And like everyone was notified about it. Like it was on all the outlets and everything. Everyone knew about it. I made a post about it. I made a post about his first game. He was a great player. But Chris, like no one had heard about him uh, or knew um, where he was from or anything like that. So I did more research on him at the time. Um, you know, he's never been like a big time scorer or a big time player, but he's just been solid. He's a hard worker. That's what Coach Hoonan likes. So it'll be great to have him back at a big guy in the middle. Um, up until today, we really haven't had that many big guys because all our posts left. Um, Casey and Jonathan Kanyango both graduated, and Yak Yak, I think, is transferring somewhere else. Not too sure where. I haven't heard any news on that. Um, but we did sign a new um, post today, and I'll talk more about that in the video. Can't pronounce his last name, so I will, but I'll talk about that later on when we get to him. Um, another guy that I'm not too sure if he's staying or not, or what's going on with his situation, is Louis Duarte. I think it's how you pronounce his last name. Um, so he was supposed to play with us last season, but some things happened. I'm not too sure on the whole situation, but he couldn't play with us last year. And so I was assuming he was going to transfer, but I was talking to some of the guys that said, oh, he's going to stay, but he never played. Um, so I'm just not sure if he wasn't able to play last year for some certain um, circumstances or reasons, but he was still um, on campus a lot. I saw him working out. I saw him, you know, in the you know Pan American Center. I saw him post stuff that he was always there working out with the coaches. So he might be a player that's coming back. I'm not 100% sure, more 50-50 on that. But if he comes back, I mean, hey, he was a great player at uh, Overtime Elite. He's a really solid guard. I think he can do a lot of great things for us if he's staying. If he does say that's five guys staying from last year, so that will be huge. Um, might not sound like a lot, but there's a lot of teams that are like that in college basketball. And, hey, we'll take four or five guys coming back, then none, right? Um, now let's talk about the guys who we've signed. This is where I'm going to have to start looking at more information that I have on my screen or my paper over here. Uh, so I'm going to try to focus on the camera, but also be looking over here. So if you guys get confused about what the heck I'm looking at, you guys know. One guy that we signed that I'm really excited to watch is Deontay Bostic. He was really solid at Cal, Stor oh my gosh, I can't talk. Cal State Northridge. Um, he was one of the best players in the conference, and he just did a lot of great things. He was an honorable mention, I think. And he should have, honestly, compared to the other guys, I was looking at their stats and their highlights and stuff. Because I don't just accumulate everything on stats. you got to watch the games and you know see how they pass the eye level test. I'm not sure to be biased because he's on our team, but he looked a lot better than most of the guys that were ahead of him, you know, on those teams. I think he's got a chance to be one of the best players in Conference USA, looking at other teams and how they're looking. Deontay's a really solid guard. I think he's about 6'2". Um, not sure how much he weighs, but I think he's a big guard. Strong dude, um, athletic, can do a lot of great things. Excited to see how he does for us. Uh, we'll see how it all goes. I'm excited for that and, you know, to, to see how he plays overall. I think he'd be a good leader for us as well with Cook. Um... Another guy we signed, I cannot pronounce his last name, so again, I'm going to throw up on the screen here. His first name's Peter. I don't know how to say last name, so I'm not going to even attempt it. Um, if anyone knows, or if he's watching the video, if everyone knows how to pronounce it, please let me know. I don't know what I'm holding. This is, so this is my room that I'm staying at for the summer, but my brother's got a bunch of crap here on the table. I'm not even sure what it is. He's into some random, random things, but he's only seven, about to be eight. So I'll, I'll cut him some slack. But Peter, really great player, really good forward. A lot of his uh, points came into pain when I was watching his highlights, but he can shoot the three ball, and he can shoot the midi somewhat decently well. Uh, but that's not really his game. Like he can shoot if he's wide open, he's gonna take it, um, which is good. We need forwards that can shoot. That'd be great. Kind of like a Robert Carpenter type player. Another player, I think I'm pronouncing this right. Hopefully, is uh, Zwady Jackson. I thought it was Zadi at first, but then I was listening to some like interviews and um, some videos, and they were saying Zwady or something like that. So I'm sorry for pronouncing that wrong. Um, he actually seems like a cool dude. I uh, made a post on him on the uh, basketball account again. If you don't follow that, go follow that right now. Um, and he actually DM'd me and said, hey, man, thanks for the, you know, thanks for the love. And I said, hey, no problem, dude. Just come in and kill, man. That's what we need. Um, dominate, dominate the court and all that. So he averaged 22 points per game at West Georgia, which is a D2 school. 
He was one of the best players in Division II basketball, one of the top scorers. I mean, if you're averaging over 20 in college basketball on any level, like, that's insane. Obviously, good at the Division One level is pretty pretty crazy good, but him even doing it at the D2 level was great. I know there were some current concerns, like, oh, why is um, Coach Hooten signing D2 guys? Christian Cook played Division II basketball. He also played D1 at another school, but he played D2 most recent and came in and was arguably our best player, like I was talking about earlier. So um, D2 guys can ball. And shout out to Colin Gurley. He's a D3 basketball player at Mount Union who actually made it on a video about a month ago. I did a Zoom call with him, and I was talking to him, and he was just letting me know that, like, hey, man, yeah, any level players can play. And I think if you watch basketball, you should know that. Um, whether it's D3, D2, or D1, anybody, you know, can hoop. You know what I'm saying? So Zwaity could be one of our top players. I'm not too sure. We have, we're, we're guard loaded. Um, I'm assuming Deontay's going to be a big-time starter for us, along with Cook. So Zwaity could be a guy that comes off the bench and is, like, a good six-man for us. I'm not too sure. Maybe he'll start, too. I'm not the coach, and I haven't seen them all play together. So I can't make those decisions, obviously, but I'm just going based on what I've seen. But he's going to be a great time player for us, nonetheless. I mean, if you're averaging 20-plus points a game um, and you transfer, you're going to transfer to a good school. And I believe that West Georgia, they're actually going to be a D1 next year. They're um, moving up to a D1. Um, but he decided to come, here, uh, come to New Mexico State. So we appreciate that, and we're glad to have him. Um, another a couple of freshmen that we're signing, some top freshmen in the country, actually, or top freshmen in their respectable states, Gabe Pickens, and um, Jacoby, um, Jacoby Osborne. I think that's how you say their names. Um, shout out to those guys. I'm excited to see how they play. Again, if I pronounce the name wrong, I'm sorry. Um, please let me know how to actually pronounce them. Just not good with pronouncing names um, all, all the time. <laughs> None of the time, really. Um, those guys are really great players, really good in um, high school and all that. I'm really excited to see how they can play and see what they can do for the team. Uh, I think I'm excited to see how they do. Uh, you know, young guys. You know, I know um, Jacoby, he played basketball in Texas, I think for, no, what was it? He played basketball in Texas for a little bit. And um, he was one of the top guys in the state. Um, and he, I think he averaged about 14 points per game his junior season. And um, Gabe Pickens averaged about 12 points and five assists um, in Arizona. He's one of the top guards up there in Arizona. Um, Arizona and Texas, as you guys know, are really big on basketball. So I'm really excited to see how those guys can come in and kill for us, some young guys, some fresh legs. Not sure how many minutes they'll get, because as you guys know, a lot of times freshmen, if they're not like on the big stage or in a big school, like a Power Five, they don't always get a whole lot of minutes, especially at MSU. We haven't really played a whole lot of freshmen recently. I mean, I know we played Keelan Dorsey and Yak Yak here and there when we had to because um, we were low on guys at certain points of the season. So maybe it'll be a situation like that, or maybe we'll get a lot more minutes. I don't know, because again, they're really solid players, but compared to some other guys that have more experience, especially since they're freshmen and young, it might take some time for them to earn their stripes, but I'm sure eventually they'll develop into great players, and hopefully they develop into great players in Mexico State and don't just leave us after a year, you know? Um, another player that we just signed today, again, not going to say his last name because I don't know how the heck to say it, um, but his first name is Emmanuel, um, and I'll put it again, I'll put his name on the screen like I've been doing for a couple players, and I'm sorry for not being able to pronounce it. I just don't even want to try and mess it up, and it's just going to take up some time. So he, he was a solid player in the Big West um, at UCSD. Um, this past year, he averaged just over four points a game and five rebounds a game in limited minutes. I think he played about, well, not limited, but about 14 minutes a game. He was a solid player. Um, in, a, in a great conference for some great coaches, and he's a seven foot center. And hey, we we have a lot of guards. We've signed a lot of guards this off season. But something that we've been needing, and the Aggie fans can agree, can agree with me on this, we've been needing centers and posts and all that. And he fills that um, that hole. I'm not saying he's gonna be as good as Casey because Casey was really dominant. He was a really dominant force in the paint for us. Um, I think he's gonna be more of a uh, Jonathan Kenyanga type player that we had this past season. He said I think he's gonna score a little more than Jonathan. Jonathan didn't really score. He's more of a you know he just got a lot of blocks, which is great. That's what we needed. Uh, Manuel's definitely going to get a lot of blocks for us, too. And another thing with him, too, is he shot the ball really well. He shot about 60% from the field. Obviously, him being a post, all, most of his points came to paint. Um, the highlights I was watching, I'm not sure if he has a shot, like if he can shoot the three ball well at all or the midi that great. Um, I'm assuming not just because he's a seven-foot center, but I could be wrong on that. Maybe he can. Just from the, the stuff I saw, I didn't really see a whole lot of shooting. He's just dominating the paint. He had really good touch around the paint, too, really good footwork. Um, so some people might look at the stats and be like, oh, he's only averaging four points. Why, you know, why do we sign him? It, when you hear people say that, I say, you know, they're a casual fan and don't know the game. We don't know college basketball. Like, it's not about scoring. It's not about stats all the time. He passes the eye test. I was watching some highlights on him on YouTube, and I wasn't a whole lot. I was, like, like about two or three videos, a couple minutes each, and uh, I just saw some good things. I saw, I, you know, I saw, like, he can be a solid player at NSU. I really think he can. The Big West is a great conference. I think Conference USA is a good conference as well. I think he, him going to New Mexico State, I think he's going to be able to have a chance to, you know, make a name for himself. And... If the season started today, he's one of our only centers, so he might, you know, I'm not sure who else we're going to get. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be starting for the bench. Really, just depends on what other post or centers we get. Depends on how Chris develops as well. Um, but he's going to gain some big minutes for us, and I can't wait to see him play. Um, as of right now, those are all the guys that we've signed so far. Um, 
now, since it's been about 15 minutes, I'm gonna talk about some of the guys that left. Um, I wasn't gonna really talk about that. I was gonna make a separate video on that, but I'm like, might as well just talk about it in this video, just talk more about the guys that left. Uh, we still love those guys, you know, even though they're not here anymore. Um, they're great players for us. Like I mentioned earlier, Femi Udkali, he's transferring. He's gonna be playing in Minnesota, so at a Big Ten school, I believe in the Big Ten. Um, really good school, really good program, um, which is where Coach Kill came from, our old football coach, um, who turned things around for the football team, so shout out to him. I think Femi's gonna be really good at um, Minnesota. He's been in Big Ten programs before. Um, he's been at some solid, solid programs, like I've been saying. So I think he's going to be really good there. Um, I think he's got the chance to be a really successful player. I think he's got about a year of eligibility. The thing with him, with us, and with other teams too, he couldn't shoot a free throw to save his life. He shot forty nine percent from the free throw line, which is worse than Casey. I'm not saying Casey's a bad free throw shooter or anything like that, but he's a center, and you guys know how centers are with free throws. Not always the greatest. Not as bad as Shaq though. But Femi could just not shoot a free throw to save his life, and. Um, I love Femi's game and all that. I really liked him on the team. I think he was really solid for us. Did a lot of good things for us. I'm not trying to talk bad about him at all. But um, it was really stressful for a lot of Aggie fans. And I uh, was with my friends. We were always watching the games. Every team went to the free throw line. Most guys that went to the free throw line, like Cook, Jaden, Jalen, were like, oh, they're going to be no knock it down. But when Femi went to the free throw line, I had no, like, it was like there was no way he was going to make it. He did have that one game winner against Western Kentucky to complete that 23-point comeback to give us a two-point lead. It's the free throw. You know what I'm saying? We still won the game. And he, again, he did a lot of great things. Has a lot of really great fancy moves. Really talented. Definitely our most skilled and talented player, in my opinion. Doesn't mean he was the best player for us. It wasn't that, you know, he's still solid. He's still a solid career player. I think if he can improve his free throw shooting, then he'll be, if he can just shoot like 70% from the line, which isn't that high, but it's better than 49. Dude, his, his scoring average would, he averaged about just under 11 points again this season. I think he averaged about 10.7, 10.8. If he were to, um, Make his free throws. He could probably have like twelve or thirteen points a game, and if he can develop more of it, because he's a, he's got a decent mid range shot. If he can shoot the three ball a little bit better, um, which honestly I think his three point shooting is better than his free throw shooting, um, I think he can be successful anywhere he's at. Um, I'm not sure what his goals are after college. I'm not sure if he's going to try to play professionally or not, um, but he's definitely got the skill level to do it. Another guy that's leaving is Jalen Jackson Posey. He's going to play at HBCU, I believe, at Texas Southern. Uh, I think he's going to be a great player there. Uh, I think he's got another year of eligibility as well. He was solid for us in the one year he's here. He was also at SFA and was a solid player off the bench there. Started for us for the most part. Had a little injury here and there um, that, that sidelined him for a couple of games. But he averaged about seven points. Uh, had a big game against UNM at home at the Pan American Center. He had 22 points. I think he only missed like one three, and then he only missed a couple shots there the whole game. He could not miss, and he was the big reason why we were in that game. There was some dude sitting next to me that was like talking about how good he was. He was glazing him like crazy. He was like, dude, holy crap, man, chill out. Um, he was doing good, but don't get me wrong. But the guy next to me, you could tell, he's like, oh, Jalen's our best player. Which shout out to Jalen, but he was not our best player. Um, he was, you, know, you could tell, he was drunk too. You could tell he didn't really know what he was talking about. But shout out to Jalen. He had a great game that game. He had a great season overall. Did a lot of really good things for us. I uh, really liked watching him play. He really controlled the offense well. Had a great game against Kentucky that first game of the season. Uh, he was one of our top scorers that game. Um, just a really great player overall. He was one of the top guys, you know, with assists on our team, at being the point guard, obviously. Um, another guy we're, we're losing is one of my good friends, Keelan, Keelan Dorsey. Um, shout out to him. He was, uh, you know, he didn't get a whole lot of minutes, but when he did, he went in there, did his job, did his thing. You know, um, I wish he would have been a little more efficient towards the end of the season. Um, but he was given his opportunities, and, you know, he, he did his best, worked hard. Now he's playing at some smaller school in Texas at a JUCO. I think it's called Kelger College. I could be wrong. Um, but I think he's going to be able to dominate there. It's a really good program. They're really always successful, win a lot of games, always have 20-plus win seasons. Um, so I think he's going to be a solid player there and have a chance to get more minutes and be a big-time player for them um, and, you know, just prove himself to be a solidified college basketball player and return to play Division One. Who knows? Maybe he'll always come back to MSU. I doubt it, but there's always a chance because he's got a good connection with Coach Hooten. Um, Coach Hooten played with his dad in college at Tarleton State, I believe. Um, at least that's what he told me. So if I'm wrong in that, again, don't <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying what people tell me, you know. Um, another guy we're losing is Yak Yak. He entered the portal. He was, I think he was the first guy to enter the portal. And I'm not too sure on what he's, um, where he's at right now. And I was talking to Keelan. He was telling me that he's going to be transferred to another D1 school, I think. I haven't heard too much information on that. But if I do, obviously I'll notify you guys, let you guys know in these videos. Um, who's the, another player, Tosh Petway, who I mentioned earlier. He's transferring to, I can't remember what school it was on the top of my head. I think it was Prairie View a &M. That's what it was. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, they're a smaller program. They're not always known for their basketball program, um, but I think he had a chance to go there and just be a great player. And I think he'll be, be even better there than he was for us. It took him some time because he joined us midway through the season, like I said earlier. He had to kind of get used to coaching and system. It took him some time, but I think he's going to be a great player over there, and I can't wait to see how he plays. Like I said, Jordan Rawls, Casey Ziagu, Jonathan Kaniego all graduated, but they're all great players for us. Um, Jordan Rawls led up the team in assists. 
was a good scorer here and there for us. I mean, he, I think he averaged about eight, nine points a game. Casey was a great player in the, in the paint for us, great force, um, solid player overall. And then um, Jonathan Cachango was good as well. Uh, we didn't miss all those guys. I believe those are all the guys that I mentioned that have left, and I mentioned all the guys that are staying on the new guys we have. Let's just give you guys an update on everything that's going on. Um, everything that I know personally, if there's anything else, I'll let you guys know. Again, I was going to make a separate video talking about the guys who have left, going on to play at other schools. Um, I just decided to add in this video and make this one a little bit longer because ideally I want to get these videos to 20 to 30 minutes or longer if I can. I know I talk fast a lot. I'm trying to talk slower and I feel like I'm doing better at that, but I still do talk fast, so I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all I really got to say. Um, I hope you guys appreciate... Uh, damn, I can't talk. I can never talk. I hope you guys um, like the video. And if you did like the video, give this video a like and subscribe if you're new. I would really appreciate it. Um, again, I want to continue these styles of vlogs. And um, I, I think I got a lot to offer when it comes to this. And um, I'm excited to keep it rolling, keep it going. And um, I'm not sure when I'll upload this video. Because um, today's Thursday, May 30th. I just uploaded a unit video. Probably upload this video in a couple days on the weekend, maybe Saturday or Sunday. Uh, maybe Friday. It really just depends. Um, and then um, probably upload another video. Like I said, like last video, I want to upload about one to three videos a week. I know I'm not wearing any Mexico State gear. I know I said I would do that in most of these videos. But I thought this looked kind of nice. And it's, there's some red, so there's some Aggie colors. Um, we actually had jerseys that were blue one year. I think it was, a, it was the hazing year, um, the year that nobody likes to talk about. I, including myself, I don't like talking about the year. They had one game where there were like some blue jerseys. There's not really blue on this, but it kind of slightly is. So I guess you can say it's somewhat of an Aggie shirt, even though it's not. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And um, I have nothing else to talk about. So stay tuned and um, see you guys next time.